Hello everyone. Just give me a second. Just gonna get started here. Do -do -do. But before I do, I just wanted to jump onto I, I keep forgetting to do this. This is a something I need to build a habit into. Which is I'll start the stream, but then I won't go to my Facebook so I can watch it. And so that way I can answer questions. What's up, Val? And now I have it set up, so now we should be good. I'm just going to do a quick sketch on here. And then let's go ahead and minimize these things. Go to broadcast. Alright. Grab my leak on pen. Ah, see, I keep forgetting some. I forgot to turn the lights on because it's dark and we're in the room. So we're going to screw up my eyeballs. Anyways, who else is up in here? What's up, James? What's up, Zach? What's up, George? What's up, Sebastian? Oh, thank you, Sebastian. Those are very kind words. So why don't we get why don't we get pretty crazy? Let's let's start off doing something with like a more sketchy brush. Yeah, today was a good day. I uh, hung out with the kiddos. Uh, I was watching them most of the day. I was very tired though. I've been super tired lately in the last few days but I we went out we went to Michael's got some cool supplies and then uh, for the kids especially Delilah she's really into like creating beads for like like jewelry and we she gives it to us and we wear it in school but for me uh, it was cool because I I'm getting into crafting too I'm doing a little bit of crafting here and there um, I put in two weeks into my job that I had currently um so that way i can start working from home again and start teaching more and start doing these things and it's already kind of been beneficial uh doing these have not only been able to kind of help promote like my teaching yet again but also like get me into contact with you guys talk with you guys a lot more um and on a more personal level right because i can see who's up in here like tabias tabiso t-h-a-b-i-s-o i don't know how to pronounce that man oh she is three time khalid Uptime, uh, Jeremy, Bonjour, Ricardo, and then uh, uh, Ahmed. Right? It's nice to meet you too, buddy. It's nice to meet all of you. It's always a pleasure. I love doing these things. These are a lot of fun. So for me, uh, I'm doing a lot of this, like trying to get back in track of like doing more artwork for myself. Um, cause I used to post all the time. I used to do art all the freaking time and it used to be f fun in the point where I would just draw all, uh, all kinds of cool concepts and designs. I'd like experiment. I'd go online, look at other artists and get inspired and then come back and want to do something like this. Um, uh, but you know, because I've been so, uh, busy in the last few years, I, I just kind of realized I've been not doing that as much. Um, also, I haven't been hanging out with my good old friends a lot more. And I, I mean, you know, having kids definitely takes a little bit out of you. It takes your time away a bit more, but not that much. Um, not as much as, like, I lost. And so, technically, I didn't lose, but time that I was putting into other things. So, yeah, I mean, this is a lot of fun. I had a good day, just kind of relaxing, getting arts and crafts, like I said. And then, what else, what else happened today? What else was a good weekend. Oh, well, it's just a good weekend in general. Just kind of relaxed. Just super tired. Super tired. But we, like I said, we went out and then I got like this burrito and after eating the burrito, I could start feeling the energy coming like right in. And I'm starting to think I'm just not eating enough in a day. Um, cause, because I'm vegan and so be, being a vegan, you have to eat like so much more. Uh, because most of the food that we're normally eating is so cal calorically dense, like all the foods that we normally go about and eat, like it has so much cal like a like a a burger, for instance, has like that alone can get to a thousand calories. But that's the problem, right? Because that's just like one burger, and people generally eat more than one burger. And then you have the fries, and then the drink, and then that add, adds up almost like twelve hundred, maybe fifteen hundred calories. And so it gets up there, gets up there quite a bit. Um, but since like, uh, like when I first started vegan diet, I was eating a lot, 
um, because I was in control of what was going on most of the time. But since I've been like, uh, ever since I started working uh, in LA, and I've been like traveling here and there, uh, it's like harder to kind of maintain. And I realize it's really hard to do that. Like, and so I end up eating less, not because, um, not because I can't get food to me. It's just because I don't. It's hard to find vegan food in general. Um, wherever you go and without buying the really junk stuff because there's there's junk even for vegan and so when we went got this burrito and that was nice because going to get that burrito i already knew it was gonna be like 800 600 or 800 to 700 calories and i probably only had like 1200 calories today again because i was just like watching the kids the whole time we didn't go grocery shopping and i couldn't just go out and just like get food and stuff so it was like I think what all I needed to do was just eat, and that's probably why I was so tired today. I just didn't get enough caloric density. But whenever I eat a lot, like I feel real good. Highly recommend switching to a vegan diet. But you have to be cautious of what I just talked about right now. Like it's really easy not to undereat. Like you can eat a lot. Like you can eat so much and still have not eaten enough. Like you can eat like like twice as much, uh, like in front of you, like twice as much food that's in front of you. And it may, like, you may think, oh my gosh, I'm eating so much carbs, or I'm eating so much this, or that. Trust me, it's not enough. You need to get about 2,025, or 2,500 calories. Well, it depends on your weight. Like, I need about 2,500, maybe even 3,000 calories, because I'm, I'm a bigger dude, and I work out. Um, so I need, like, yeah, up there, I need a lot of calories. So, to quantify that, it would be easy, actually, if I all I did was eat, if I had stuck to Chipotle as my main source of food, because I did that actually in the beginning, because I didn't know where else to go, and I think I should kind of go back to that, because Chipotle is actually really healthy, especially if you go vegan, because all you do is just eat everything but the meat and cheese, um, which is actually not as hard as you think, because Chipotle's sauces are delicious, and so for me, um, what I would used to do is I would eat the burrito bowl, or a burrito, and all I would do is get the burrito, and I would just like double down on the rice, double down on the beans, and then I would uh, uh, get all the sauces, and then I would get the corn, the fajitas. I wouldn't get the sofritas. I would get the guacamole. So that would be easy, like twelve hundred calories, just that one thing. But even then, I would cut it in half. Like I would s- separate that meal, so then I can like have it later on the day. And so it's it's pretty pretty good deal to be honest. Like you, it's like costs half the half the time or half the price too if you get that, which is really fucking baller. And I, that's what I'm saying. I should probably get back into that, but this is you know I get so busy and I had like no time and this is like, what am I doing, man? Screwing everything up, and so I think I'm gonna go back into it, get back into the to the Chipotle train, and then also I was preparing a lot of my food too. I was like making a lot more smoothies, cooking a lot more, and it was it was nice. But that's back when I was working for myself. I think it's, yeah, ever since I started working over in L.A., it's just been harder. Because, like, the schedule's weird. It's like I don't have a second in the morning to kind of prepare myself. And I don't, I can't go grocery shopping because i just I'm not around. And then my wife doesn't go because she's working or she's watching the kids. It's easier for her and I when we go together. And so I think that's probably why. So when I ate that burrito, it just felt real good. I feel real good now. And I was like, hey, I feel great now. I, could, I should do a stream. It's like kicked right in. It's crazy. Fruits and vegetables, man, are good for you. Anyway, how's everyone else's weekend? Everyone else do good, cool things? Let me kind of go through here. See what people have been saying. Uh, Mohammed, what's up, man? Zabby, what's up? Patrick, what's up? Ricardo? Nice to meet you too. Coming from Florida, cool. Andres, nice to meet you, buddy. Roberson, oh Roberson, hey AJ, what's up? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Ari, Ari, I, what's up, buddy? Timothy, what's up, friend? What am I painting? I don't know. I'm just I'm trying out style, trying to do a little more comic bookish work. Um, because I'm doing like card art, and I want it to be a little bit more stylized, a little bit more like kind of cool and like graphic and so doing a little bit of practice there Gabriel um I do not speak Spanish um have you practiced yes I practiced all the time 
Teach me all the way, Marcos. What's up? Uh, Ricardo again. Bro, I eat like every five minutes and I don't gain a pound. <laughs> Are you also vegan, Ricardo? Yeah, if you're, if you're vegan, like you can eat so much food. Because all the food that you're eating is like really easy to digest mostly right right like it's especially if you eat whole foods like plants like right like straight up the plants like the corn or the, the tomato as they were very very little processing you, it goes right through you man like you eat it and you just digest it and it goes right through you because you're intaking so much more fiber than you normally would on american standard diet or western diet so hey no voice or is my sound messed up there is a voice Hey, what's up, Leanne? So good to hear your voice with your awesome storytelling. Haha, <laughs> miss you, buddy. Love you all your art. Thank you, man. It's been a while. Holy crap. How you been? I've seen pictures of you. Like, you're, you're, you're getting bigger. I mean, like, it's crazy. Like, we were all, we used to be youngins, man. Anyway. Um, Ricardo, Sean, Zabby. Story of how one legend has saved by one amazing burrito. Yeah, that burrito, like, it was stacked, man. I got, like, I told him to put everything in it. Because I was like, oh, man, what did I have today? I had, like, um, I had, shoot, I didn't really have much. <laughs> now that I think about it. Yeah, I'm, I was just, like, on autopilot, I guess, like, hanging out. Because I was trying to do a lot of work. It sucks. Like, when you're, like, focused on work, you're just not paying attention to your health. It's really bad. Sebastian. Are oh, you trying to tackle 3D Cook? Good luck, man. There's a few videos that I put out. I also put a tutorial. I'm going to put some more out, too. So if you're looking for more, I'm going to be putting quite a few out. Uh, Ricardo, I'm actually working on a painting right now, trying to practice my color theory. Awesome. Good luck. What's up, Joel? Uh, Yamagata? Sup? Is that, like a, is that like a Hitler sign right there? Is that like a put a Hail Hitler? Is that what that looks like or did you forget to put the other <laughs> what's up Patrick that battlefield yeah the battlefield looks great do you already have the final character in your image no I didn't I didn't have it in my mind no not at all Ricardo I am a dude uh yeah I, I assumed you were stops drawing to come watch the master <laughs> you don't have to stop well, no more top ramen and hot dogs and dog meat <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll stop there I'll start with Le what Leanne said uh, no, I still eat ramen. They have vegan ramen. Uh, in fact, there's like alternatives for everything, really. There's like vegan bacon and stuff like that. But it's all processed. It's kind of like pointless. Like if, I mean, it's not pointless because there are people who switch their diet for ethical reasons, you know, because they want to either save the planet or they want to, or be a contribute to saving the planet or they want to contribute to the, the, you know, the stopping of animal cruelty, which, you know, it's, it does suck. It really does. I mean, if you think about it, uh, let me put in in scope. Oh, before I lose my thought, I'll, I'll get back to that point. But my point is, is that uh, if you're doing it for ethical reasons, and all these sub meat, sub whatever, are available for people, so they don't have to entirely abandon the flavors and tastes. I mean, uh, I've had them. They're, they're they're not the same, especially like bacon. Like bacon's really hard to replace because bacon's all it is, just salt and fat, and that's pretty hard. And the consistency and texture are really difficult. But, like, certain things, like chicken nuggets, which is already kind of processed. Uh, freaking Veggie Grill has, like, their chicken nuggets there. And it is, like, it's actually kind of better than any kind of chicken nugget you can get somewhere else. Um, but, it, again, it's processed, you know. Um, Veg Veggie Grill, I think, is a good place to start for anyone who's just starting out. Because they have a lot of good alternative sandwiches and meals. But in terms of, yeah, like... You know, being a vegan entirely, it's 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 very difficult to find substitutes for meats. But if you are, uh, I wouldn't say very very difficult, but I can see why it'd be difficult for people to kind of really stick with it. But if you're like me, who was kind of like I don't really care, like I'm really in it for the health and I want to try to feel better. Um, it, it helped a lot, you know, especially when I first started. Like I was freaking, it, it was like night and day. Like I I woke up, it seemed like. Um, but anyway, yeah, the, the whole ethical aspect of it, which is starting to become more and more, uh, easier for me to kind of start to see kind of how terrible th that, that is. And I, again, I'm not trying to get preaching on anybody. If anybody doesn't want to, I'm not trying to convince you guys to do anything. Uh, if you're interested, I would highly recommend you do your own research, go online yourself and look it up yourself. Don't take my word for it. Um, there's plenty of 
epically evil looking videos out there that will, if that does not make your stomach turn, then uh, I don't know. But but if you think about it and the, the world saving uh, aspect of it, because that's the kind of part that really hits me, is the part that uh, we're, we're really destroying our planet because of this this um, convenience. So if you think about it like this, think of it like this. When evolution allowed us to take millions of years and to really evolve into like the eating habits and the lifestyles that we have or like the biology that we have right now, the physiology that we have today, right? And if you think about it, like a lot of what we did when we were um, still living in caves and stuff, uh, we were pretty only limited to uh, plants and vegetables and some bugs, you know, things that were easy to catch. Plants don't run. And we, at a time, didn't have tools either, did we? We didn't have any, we had to, we were like, we were very much like our primate cousins, and we had to just get the food that was not running away from us. And then uh, we we were smarter enough to invent tools, so we were able to, you know, catch animals with primitive tools like a, an axe or a spear, a spear. And with those same tools, you know, we were able to chop them up and, you know, tear their flesh because we didn't have claws of our own, like a lion or a tiger. Um, but then, you know, we, we were able to eat it, but we were dying from all these kinds of diseases because our, our physiology was not adapted to digesting like raw meat. Um, some people were able to survive, sure, but not all of us. Most of us would die. Most of us still die. You know, there's, there's a reason why we tell people to cook chicken all the way through. Right? And pork. So, uh, then we invented fire, or we discovered fire, and we were like, whoa, what? And then we were able to cook and dis- disinfect, basically, um, a lot of these meats, right? So, so far, so good. Like, this is fine. Like, we were eating meat in moderation. Like, if you killed a, a stag or a wild ox, that was it, right? And you'd have that for the whole tribe or for your whole family, and that would last you for a good week. I mean, it only could because it's, it's a perishable. And then we started inventing, you know, refrigeration, then modern uh, transportation, and better cooking uh, tools. All this in the span of thousands of years, not millions, thousands. And a lot of this is why we're having a lot of health issues and problems today. It's because we're eating too much meat, right? Like, it's too easy to get it. Uh, Imagine if you were to give a steak to your family once a week, right? That would be killing one cow to just get that one steak, right? And imagine that steak had to be, let's say you took that cow and you really used it, like you fed four or five families. And just in America, we'll just take the population of America, 300 million uh, around roughly. And you just fed like, you know, the population of America, a few families, whatever, so forth and so on. And then, and if that took like about, like I said, once, one or two, let's, What's up, Suda? Oh, yeah. Did you see my comment? People are wondering, why are you drawing that? My wife came in here. She's like, what? Why are they talking about vegan stuff? Because I just started talking about it. Anyway, so... Yeah. My wife is semi-vegan. She's not entirely vegan. But she's mostly... 90%. I'd say 80. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so if you think about like our technology, our technology is evolved way, way faster than our physiology, and that's why we're having all these issues. But you know, getting getting back to kind of the whole um, reason why I switched over, uh, and one of the compounding points that I'm really like solidifying on nowadays is that it's just it's just too much. You know, it's too much for no real reason. You know, we really don't need to. And, and a lot of it is, is really affecting our, our, our world, right? Think, think about it. Like I said, if one person a week was eating just a steak, like if uh, nobody's doing that, but if they did, um, like nobody's eating that little is what I'm saying. Only us vegans and vegetarians, I guess. But the point is that that's billions of cows a year that die like a billion like it gets into i think it's like i did the math it's like at least five or six billion cows are like literally destroyed right and that kind of sucks but think about like har harboring like har- like you know like 
harvesting this much, we have to have land to feed them, and then we have to have land to basically make the food to feed them. And then it starts, that's what starts to get into the problem. And then we have the transportation to transport all this all over the world, or at least in America. And that starts adding, compounding. It's kind of funny because I'm just talking about this and I'm drawing this like monster that totally eats cows and <laughs> eats meat. He's like, hey, bro, stop talking about what I like to eat. I eat humans. Anyway, um, <laughs> I love myself some human flesh. This is whole vegan stuff. Um, so the point is, is that the, the, the truth is that we're not killing a billion. We're killing about 56 billion a year that's a lot man like you gotta admit that's a lot and when i heard about this kind of stuff it kind of like made me upset a bit um and so yeah that's one of the the another contributing part like not only was it that i believe my physiology was not really capable of what i was doing before uh but also it's just really it's just kind of sucky it really is so i've been telling anybody who ever asks it's like well, what should i do or or uh whatever i tell them oh, that's, that's all good man just uh Bring it down a notch. That's all. And there's like companies like um, Super Meat that are like literally making meat, like not fake meat, like for real meat, but like from the lab. And that, that's a huge step in uh, in a good direction because what that will do is allow people to still eat their meat, and we don't have to go through all the terrible things that we do now. It's just really bad habits, bad system, and people can have their meat, and uh, vegans can. Leave them alone. Tell them the, the vegans can uh, shut the fuck up then. <laughs> you know what I mean? And we will be saving our planet. And there will be less deaths. And uh, everyone will be able to have bacon. And so, I think, uh, like, I don't know how I got into this rant. I'm not going to stop right now. But I, I, I highly recommend you guys consider it. Like, you, you should look into it. Or at least, at least eating more veggies. Uh, no one argues against eating more veggies. Right, eating more plants and vegetables, or fruits and vegetables, is just clearly um, not bad strats. It's definitely good for your body. And uh, anyway, I'm gonna keep painting this guy. I think I like this. It looks like he's dancing. Jeepers, creepers, where to get those sneakers? All right, let me see. Let me see where did I leave off? What's up, Cassandra? What's up, Ricardo? What's up, Sebastian, again? What's up, Maxim? What's up, Michael Young? Just got inside from a phone call cooking pizza and saw a stream. <laughs> it's hype. Remember, never, ever, ever touch the battlefield, that battlefield. You asked if I was vegan. That's why I said I am a dude, not like am, not like am I a dude to clarify. Wait, I don't understand still. So being a man, is that what you're saying? Being a dude makes you not vegan? Is that <laughs> Billy Martin turns on vegan switch? Uh, love your uh, love your work, man. I hope to get to that level one day. I'm from Brazil. I was in Brazil. Uh, I think it was this year, or was it last year? Actually, last year, we did a workshop and everything. It was awesome. I come in and AJ is talking about veganism. What are the chances? I know, right? Nah, it's gonna happen all the time, man. Like whenever if I start talking about, I'm gonna get into it for sure. So cool, master. Thank you, Camilo. Vegan, vegan, vegan. Yep, that's my wife. She's been super supportive. Like when we first switched over, like she's like, I don't, know, I don't want to do that. And then she switched over, and she's like, I love it. So I'm vegan eight years and feeling much better every day and with nature and myself. Good job, Roberson. Michael Young, do you follow Simit Nutrition on YouTube? Uh, I don't know who that is. Simit Nutrition. Awesome. Peace. Got a sweet jock vibe to it. Yeah, it's like a jock monster. <laughs> Niddle, if the point is eating less meat, then eat less meat. Don't ban yourself from it. It looks like your wife is the one doing it, right? Um, no, no, no. I, I feel like if I don't have to eat meat at all, then I don't need to. When I first started, I'll, I'll explain in just a second. Let me get through everybody. Zach, I was told the, the introduction of the extra protein of the meat helped our brains grow. I don't know, though. The internet never lies. 90% <laughs> vegan. 10% is the delicious seafood. I actually don't miss red meat. <laughs> made Jones, Anthony Jones made me vegan. Enzo, Ricardo, you asked me if I was a vegan, to which I answered, I am man. <laughs> okay, Adrian, stop with the vegan talk. Let's talk about my favorite talk. 
uh, Maxim, I just got my filet mignon and it was good, but now I feel like I should eat less steaks. <laughs> I mean, you know the the feeling of um, you know the feeling of uh, that you get when you eat a lot of food and you feel like you want to pass out and sleep. Uh, that that doesn't happen. It's the opposite. Usually, whenever I fe- eat food, I wake up and start moving my body. Um, but yeah, like uh, when I first started, let me tell you guys exactly what I did, and then I'm gonna stop. Like I said, um, just because I, I first started eating less meat because that's pretty much where I started too. I was just like, yeah, whatever. And then as I looked more and more and researched more and more into the causes of the, the cholesterol uh, level that rises into your, uh, you know, your veins and all this stuff, it starts messing you up. Carpal tunnel, all these things actually contribute to eating more and more meat. As soon as I stop, I don't have carpal tunnel anymore. At least the, the numbness in my hand went away entirely. I don't have it anymore. I used to have it all the time whenever I paint and draw. No, it doesn't happen as often, like, if at all right? Which is great. Uh, because when you eat less cholesterol, you don't clog your arteries as much. But you can still can if you eat too much saturated fat, which you can still do. But uh, that was like the first thing to go away. And then, um, but what I did was I just started small. I was like, once, like, as if I can avoid it, I'll avoid it. But if I can't, I'll just eat it, whatever, no big deal. But then after like a week, I was just like, well, what if I just completely get rid of it? And then I did that. And then I was like, all right. I think the hardest one, um, even to this day, it's still very difficult. Uh, maybe not so much of in cravings, um, but in the beginning, it was definitely cravings. Was uh, dairy? Dairy is like freaking hard. It was really hard, at least for me. I know some people are like, oh, it wasn't that hard. For me, it was like, oh man, I can't believe how much food that I enjoy eating has dairy in it. Like almost everything. It was crazy. Um, in fact, that's like the number one culprit. Whenever I go out and eat, I'm like always at the ask. And always there's like, they put dairy somewhere and I'm like, geez, again? And so, um, that one's a hard one to avoid just in general. But yeah, I mean, uh, in terms of the, the extra protein, uh, you get pro, there's plenty of protein in vegetables. Um, per calorie, uh, kale has more protein than chicken. So, I mean, it's just, it's just a myth. Uh, and what really made our brains grow it was the ability to cook our starches like potatoes, rice, wheat, the foods that kept our bodies alive for the millennia. Uh, I mean, if you look at every culture we have, every culture has their staple like starch, you know, some countries have wheat, some countries use corn, some countries have rice. Like I love rice and that's because I'm half Korean and that's my thing. And potatoes too. I love potatoes. And so, uh, it was ability to cook these like super enriched, uh, like starches that were basically roots, plants that were just storing tons and tons of powerful carbohydrates and good carbohydrates and uh, nutrients. Because that's pretty much what the plants were doing with them. Like a potato is pretty much just like storage, and then it's just gonna eat it later. And then we just like, nah, give me that. And then we eat it, and then we have all that energy. I mean, all of our energy comes from the sun. If you really want to get technical, yeah, we can switch it over to science. Let's switch it to science. Like, if you want to get really into it, like, um, all of our energy comes from the sun. Like, everything that we do comes from the sun. Like, even the food, even when you're eating meat, because the animals that we eat eat the plants, and the plants eat the sunlight. And so, you know, I I want to be very clear. It's like, that's where we're getting all of our, our genuine energy from. So whenever a scientist discover how to put on like solar panel skin on people, like if you can just have like solar panel patches that you can put on your body and then you won't have to eat at all. You just get all of your nutrients and energy from the sun itself. You just convert all that stuff. The patches will help discover in or reconstruct, you know, enzymes and create the nutrients that your body needs. It's like, it would be like having a, an app on your phone too. You can just be like, Oh, what do I need today? Oh, I need more vitamin D. And it'll just crank that up. <laughs> and it'll just turn that the sunlight into that nutrient that you need at that moment. Which would be cool, right? I want to live in that future. Uh, and it would be the most cost-effective thing we can do, too. Like, that that would be amazing. Anyone who's a scientist in here listening to my stream, by chance, get on it. Start working on this solar power... Um, solar power freaking sun patches. Can't wait but uh yeah i mean i i eat like a gorilla eat tons of plants 
or an elephant or a rhino. Anywho, anyone have any questions though about drawings? Maxim, I just got a fillet. Oh, yeah, we already talked about him. Aliens. <laughs> Remember that argument we had once about aliens? I had the same argument with my wife. It's so funny. B12 is the only type of protein that comes f uh, only from meat products, but can be obtained as a supplement pill uh, or spray that you can take daily. And yes, it's essential for your brain. Uh, B12 does not come from meat, by the way. Look into it. Uh, you'll be surprised. In fact, the the cows that eat the, the grains, they are supplemented with B12 because animals don't produce it, brother. Look into it, man. I'm not, uh, I'm not bullshitting. B12 comes from bacteria, bro. James, I applaud your self-discipline. I love my grass-fed steak. Yeah, well, you can keep eating, man. Potato. <laughs> to be honest, my favorite thing about humanity is that we've evolved and advanced to the point where we can decide what we want to eat rather than having to struggle with whatever's near us is edible. Yeah, that's true. That's the problem. Uh, oh, we are talking science. Let's talk color theory. How does freaking local colors work? La laugh a lot. All this warm light, cool shadow, plus bounce light hues. Ah, so confusing. I don't know what colors to believe. I believe you, man. That was epic. Um, so what you want to do with local values or the way you want to imagine local values specifically is stop thinking of it, um, in a lot of different ways. Just think of it as very simply as light hitting an object and creating forms, right? Uh, I think this is a problem that I see a lot of people do. So imagine you have like a sphere with like a stripe and a circle on it. And then you say, I want to light it. Now, here's how I see a lot of people light things. Um, whenever I see people post or whenever people see people share their stuff on, online, they'll light it like this. They'll like put the light on one side and shed on the other side. And what the problem is, is that you have the local values pretty much destroyed. Okay. Now, if you start doing something like this, this is a little bit more closer to what I would expect to happen. Um, but I think a little bit more along the lines like this. Okay, because this is going to be more convincing, and then you can put the bounce light on the other side. Uh, and then when you start to investigate, like this bounce light is actually um, pretty dark too. Like I'm putting it up against the the light part of it, and it's it's actually darker. In fact, I can make it even darker if I wanted to, and it still look very illuminated. All right, if I did something like that, it still looks pretty bright. And if I went over here. And just add a little bit of more of like a brightness there, then you definitely get that. And so when you're talking about color, I mean, all you got to think about then in terms of color is just uh, what color is hitting that local value and, and what happens when they're mixed, right? But it, I think what happens is people over, they, they think too much about everything, but it, it's really as simple as, as just thinking of the color or the original color or value being hit with a different kind of light. So let's imagine it being hit with uh, this yellow light. But this is not really like a practical light. A light is never like that color. It's usually really desaturated and very bright. Uh, and if it is this color, like if it's like blue, then it really just turns that thing into blue, right? Have you ever been to like a concert and they only had like a blue light? Like nobody is going to see red, even if they're wearing a red t-shirt. Because all that light is doing is bouncing off of a surface, right? Remember, keep it simple. A light is hitting a surface and bouncing off. And if and whatever comes b off of it needs to be in the light. So if the light doesn't have any red color, then it's not going to illuminate any red light off of the surfaces that it's bouncing off of. It's only going to illuminate different shades of blue. Understand? But let's, so let's say we have like a bright yellow and we go and throw on there. What I usually would do is use a layer that's additive like a color dodge or linear dodge or hard light. And you'll you'll get different effects for sure. But it's up to you because at this point, as long as the values read uh, accurately, I mean, the color mixing, as long as it makes sense, like in the, if you put yellow light on a red and it comes, kind of comes to orange, that makes sense. But if it's like a yellow light onto like a, a red surface and you make a green or like a purple, like that doesn't make too much sense, does it? Um, same thing with like a bounce light. So let's imagine we had like a bounce light. 
that's blue, I mean, it's going to give us, like, more purples. You know? It's just... It makes sense. You could just look at it and say, oh, that, look, that looks accurate. And then what you want to do after that is just check your uh, values because that's what's really... The, that's what really this what's going to kill you. And right now I can already tell... I can already tell that my blue needed to be brighter because it's too dark. There you go. So we can get that bounce light in there. So then we turn this off and there you go, it looks accurate. Yeah, people are too focused on the colors versus the values. And the values is what you should pay all your, put all your money in. Because the values is what makes us uh, believe in what we're looking at. Because when you're, um, when you're looking at like colors, colors are like, you know, not reliable because you can look at like a Frank Frazetta painting, which is constructed with all kinds of different colors, but yet it reads because he paints with forms and he just uses whatever colors near him <laughs> and puts it in there. Like, ah, oh, you know what? I'm going to put a green bounce light here. There's nothing in the scene that would make green bounce back up onto the surface, but I don't care because it's going to look cool. Uh, and then he'll, he'll just, you know, make it more subtle in the painting. And so that looks dope. <laughs> So, I mean, I always focus on values. Uh, even when I paint in color, I don't really look at the color. I look at the values. Hope that helps you out, Ricardo. And by the way, um, on B12, 50% uh, of Americans are B12 deficient. And only 1% of the population is vegan. So that includes you meat eaters. Just saying. Just saying. I think scientists should come up with the gas power stick. Yes, Pablo. Gas power stick. <laughs> we, we just need to get all the energy from the sun. Seriously. Like, everything we need in terms of food, in terms of our, like, our cities, and, like, all the things that we enjoy today, our internet, could be all powered by the sun. And we just need to get our head... We just need to stop doing stupid stuff like shooting each other, bombing each other, slapping each other, being prejudiced and um, discriminatory towards one another... We need to stop that. That's like literally the thing that's holding us back. If we were all just like, you know what? The world's kind of like sucky with all these things that we do to each other. Why don't we just stop and we'll work together and start like making cool stuff? <laughs> Which is already kind of happening. I mean, all these terrible things are happening around the world, but like people are knowing about it. That, that was a point where nobody knew about half the stuff that's going on. That's the first step, right? Knowledge. Now that people are knowing this, like you know, you have entrepreneurs and philanthropists like Bill Gates who are going out of their ways and making a change in the world with their their extra profits, right? Which is awesome. Like we're doing Facebook Live. Mark Zuckerberg literally just gave up ninety nine point ninety nine percent of his income or his profits or his salary whatever to charity and so it's it's just like that kind of stuff needs to happen more often and you have a lot of these young guys start big companies that don't need and they're they don't care about having all this money and they're putting it into the right spots and it's, it's a really powerful thing and i think it's going to happen it needs to happen it has to happen i know for a fact though that my kids are going to grow up in a different world than i did Right, and I mean a much more positive and much more empathetic world. Uh, I mean, I I can't imagine them growing up in any other world. We're still in a very really disgusting world in a lot of places, but they're going to grow up in a much beautiful place, unless the, unless we kill ourselves, <laughs> unless we blow up our planet, then uh, then we won't. I have a question about creativity, Nidal. And doing work with deadlines, I feel that the pressure takes the fun out of it. Maybe I don't have enough experience yet. Well, if you're getting paid, then it's a job, right? Just look at it as a job. Um, but if you're trying to do work for yourself, then it's never, it feels like a job, right? Like, I'm doing this for myself. It feels fun. It's a lot of fun hanging out with you guys, talking with you guys, having some intellectual discussion. It's great. In a dark room, I wish I could turn on the lights. So, uh, Bea, if you're still listening to this, sweetheart, can you come in and turn on the light for me? If you're not which I'm pretty sure you're not anymore, then I'm going to be living in the dark. I just don't want to step away, because if I'm going to step away, I'm going to stop the stream entirely. Um, color Constructor is an awesome app that helps with the color thing. Oh, cool. You should look into that. Ricardo, like if you have a white sphere with warm yellow light, then it will create a purple uh, cold shadow, right? No, why would it? 
think about like where the purple light's coming from. You're just putting purple light in there and just because it's purple, because you need to have a cool color. You know, cool is also gray. Gray is a cool color. You know, like uh, uh, what ends up happening is that people think that they need to, um, they think that they need to have like a color like representing every single aspect of their life. But it really is, it can be this simple. You take a color like this, you can maybe take it down to more of a cooler hue, but just desaturate it and put it in there. And it's going to look, it's going to look like blue, but it's not, right? Because if we take it out of context, it looks warmer all of a sudden, right? This, These two colors don't look the same. Am I right? But they are. They're absolutely the same. It's all context. And even me telling you that, your brain will never f forgive you. Like, it's just like, no, they're different. They're different. And you're like, no, they're definitely the same. And then when you put, like, this color next to uh, a saturated blue, it's going to look even warmer than it did before. Again, it's just all about, just don't overthink it. Is there a blue light in the scene? Yes? Then put it in there. If no, do you want to put it in there? Just because you want to make it look like a blue light. Because that's the thing about art. We don't, we don't have to live to the rules or the limitations of real life. We can do whatever we want. I, I highly advise, though, people all the time that you should gain that knowledge so then your opinion becomes strengthened and becomes more of a theory versus an opinion or a guess. Right? But yeah, if you want, like, purple stuff in there, then put, put purple stuff in there. Um, but you have to find a way to unify, right? And I would say the values is your solution. Make everything read in values then it doesn't matter if your color's all crazy, neon, Akira looking, you know, like from some sort of Japanese anime or like old school um, cyberpunk or something like that. <laughs> and yes, that's super, super amazingly helpful. Awesome. Good. That's right. Humanity has wasted a lot of time, resources, and millions of lives in war. Yeah, we're just doing stupid stuff, man. We're getting, we're getting past it, though. We're getting past it. Could you paint on a 14 screen comfortably? Yeah, I can. I'm looking into a laptop, though. I work. I mean, you just got to get used to it. Everything takes time. People are so quick at putting people's ideas and beliefs down nowadays rather than having an open mind and thinking of them as simply different instead of wrong or bad. That's exactly the kind of thinking that's going to help us get around this, man. Yeah, people are starting, sorry, people are starting to become a little more open minded, and there's more discussions happening. You know, my friend had a, we, me and my friend had a discussion. Wait, hold on, let me, before I go into that, recall, let me read the rest. Patrick, what are, what are you working on in L.A., man? Well, I was in L.A., I'm going to stop. I'm doing VR stuff. So, hey, Tyson Murphy. What's up, Toby? We're in the middle of changes. Yeah, we're right in the, well, the world is always changing, you know. Um, Ricardo, yes, you are right. There is no such thing as cool color. It's just relationships among others. Yeah, that's a, that's a, good thing to say actually maxim i mean it, it's just like a it's just a tactic that instructors will teach their novice or amateur students to prevent them from putting too many random colors and stuff everywhere but as you start to discover you, you discover your shadows can be super warm they can have really really warm hues and tones to it you know what i mean um but you can also have very cool i mean it's just it's just all depends on what you're trying to do with your painting so don't get too caught up with that stuff. Your values, I, I bet you if I were to take a look at one of your paintings and, and if we were to try to figure out what's wrong with them, uh, I bet it's your values. It has like nothing to do with your colors. Your colors are fine. It's just your values are all screwed up. Uh, that's like almost 85% of the time I discover whenever I look at my students' work and portfolios and they're like, oh, my colors are so bad. And then I say, no, not really. Your values are just terrible. And they're like, what? And then I show them and they're like, oh my gosh. You know? Uh, because my colors got so much better as soon as I started making my values number one priority. Uh, colors started getting a lot easier to do. And so, um, anyways, getting back to kind of what I was talking about, and then I'm going to stop the stream. Um, you know, the world is, is constantly changing, and we're, we're in a time where we're exposed to all this terrible, terrible things, and more and more people are starting to see it, and more and more people are starting to make changes and, and have some sort of effect, and I had a good conversation with my friend about this, because he was so upset about uh, one of those shootings, one of the many shootings that we have here in America, and he was genuinely frustrated, and he's just like, God, why can't, like, this stop? Like, why, why isn't anyone trying to fix this? 
And uh, I said, well, first of all, people are, you know, they are. It's just we're still dealing with it, right? We're still in the middle of it. You know, like things are really bad. And it, to be honest, it used to be worse. I mean, if you look at the statistics, it's actually statistically we're, we're going in a brighter direction, a better direction. It's just now the Internet's shining light on a lot of these terrible things that most people didn't know were happening. Uh, I mean, if you're looking at the mass shootings, yeah, those definitely get the headlines. But you're talking about just shootings in general. I mean, those statistics are pretty terrible still. Like, people don't realize that, like, one of the number one, like, the top killings in, with guns is suicides, right? Uh, and accidental shootings, you know? And then you start going into the criminal aspect of it. And then the the wrongly, you know, basically people shooting guns at people just because. And... <laughs> And so you start looking at those numbers, but nobody wants to talk about, oh yeah, like if we were to have a news report every freaking day about a suicide, um, I mean, maybe we should, right? Because it's pretty sucky. But my point is, is that that statistic exists and that statistic is going down, you know, luckily, you know, and the, the mass shootings and stuff is just bringing more light to all this stuff. Like all these terrible terrorist acts are bringing more light on these things. It's very similar to what was happening in, in Vietnam. Like when, when Americans didn't know what war looked like and photographers and journalists showed them, uh, there was a significant change in the attitude of what people wanted. And a lot of that stuff is happening shortly, soon, and... Maybe in the next decade we will probably see a significant change. It's funny because, you know, as I say this, one of our potential presidents uh, could be either a ter terrible, terrible, terrible liar slash criminal and another person that's also a liar slash criminal, <laughs> you know. And so we have these people potentially going to be the leaders of our country. Um, but if you look, if you look at, like, the 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 one of the, like, Donald Trump specifically, he had, like, Let's make America great again. And then uh, the Daily Show with Trevor Noah made a really good statement about when was America great, you know? And that's a really interesting question to ask, right? Because it, it that let's make America great poses this question that that we are not living in a great America today. But the reality is we are. We really are. We don't have racism as rampant as it once was. We don't have discrimination as much as it once was. We don't have um, poverty as bad as it once was. We don't have um, educations like uh, basically, what is the word, like sterile education, like where only the most elite people can get some fancy education. You know, like a lot of these things have changed. Modern medicine has become better. Um, uh, civil rights for a lot of people. I mean, think about it. We just got past a big hump where we're letting, uh, you know, same-sex marriages happen. That's in a move. That's a positive direction move. I mean, there's still people going to be upset about it, sure, but they're 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 foolish, you know. And my point is, is that like my kids are going to grow up the same way that I look at slavery. They're going to look at all the stuff that we're dealing with today. Right? They're going to be like, you guys, like, back in, when you were my age, like, people used to shoot each other in masses. Uh, people used to not let other sexes, same sexes, marry each other. Like, my kids, when they're, like, 20 or 30 or 40, they're not going to, they're going to look back at, like, stuff that we are dealing with today. Like, what? <laughs> like, you guys really had that? That's so stupid. You know? And I know that's going to be true because it's been true for every other generation, right? It's just we, we keep... It's, it's a problem with humans um, is very, we're very short-sighted, you know. We're, we only look to the, the right now. Um, and so it's, it's really hard for us to see the future sometimes. But if you look at the history of humans, um, we, we, we are pretty progressive. I think the worst times that we ever had was the Dark Ages, right? Like where we really were stuck for quite a bit. But we got out of that even, you know. So maybe we're going through sort of our own dark ages, but I would I, I doubt that this is a dark age at all because there's so many amazing things happening along with all the terrible things. I mean, think about it now. Like, a lot of you guys are from a different country right now. A lot of you guys are, like, in your homes right now watching someone from another country talking and painting about political beliefs or ideas with you that you share or not share, and we're having an honest discussion. No one's, like, burning each other down. We're all talking. And we're also doing something constructive. We're all trying to become better at our craft, right? We're, you guys are asking good, good questions about art. 
and I'm painting in front of you guys so you guys may learn something from this, you know? Um, you know, we were talking about uh, health and diet, and no one of like, burned me to the stake. Ah, get it? Pun? Steak? Burn? All right, never mind. Um, <laughs> you know, th this, this is happening more and more often, you know what I mean? Uh, yes, there's going to be people that are still, like, hating on hate because they can, uh, but a lot of other people are just really genuinely want to get past all this and live in a better world. And I think that's most of us, right? And so I'm going to end it on that. Uh, thanks again, guys, for hanging out with me during the stream. I just decided to paint this. This this guy is definitely a carnivore. He likes to eat meat. He is not a vegan. I think the art, all the things that I draw, other than I drew these, like, badass, like, versions of, like, like animals, like rhinos. I did, like, a hippo. Um, I was going to do, like, a gorilla, like, these other large vegan animals. That's not really the only one, but every other design I do, they're not. <laughs> they're definitely carnivores. I, sh I should switch the tune a little bit. It's like It would be hard to convince people that this guy eats broccoli. <laughs> anyway, thanks guys for hanging out with me. I appreciate y'all. I'm going to head out now. Uh, yes, you're right. Uh, Maxim Nadal, color changes based on what's next to it. Tide, how can we become entrepreneur artists instead of working for others? That's a heavy question. Maybe for the next time. Maybe I'll make that the discussion of, like, my rants. Um, dude, I'll send you a picture of one. <laughs> That's why black and white photos still look real. I can confirm that. I'm not sure what we were referring to earlier, but Val, yeah, I, I believe you. I believe that you're on my side or whatever I was just talking about at the moment. <laughs> about values. How do you know about what values difference is to put? Uh, there's a lot there. I don't know if I'll be able to answer any more questions, so I'm just going to give you a shout-out. Sorry, guys. Ricardo. Val. Yeah, Bernie, right? What happened to Bernie? Sebastian. Cricker. What's up, Cricker? Michael. Val. Michael again. Yamagata. Toby. Sam. Kevin, Lucas, James, Yulin, Sebastian, Patrick, and then Ulf. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Seriously. You guys are awesome. I appreciate everybody. Have a good night. Have a good week. Starting the, the work week. Good and strong and positive. And eat more vegetables. Eat more fruits and vegetables, guys. Peace out. <laughs>